Welcome everyone to Cosmos Conference and welcome to this session about F Sharp or more accurately called blowing your mind with F Sharp. My name's Aaron Powell and I'm part of the Cloud Advocate team here at Microsoft. I've been doing development for a little over 15 years now and I kind of stopped counting at 15 years so I just say a little more than 15 and the majority of my career I've spent doing .NET based development. Um, I started with things like classic ASP, which I guess was technically not .NET, but at least the precursor to, and then things like web forms, um, MVC, ASP.NET Core, all that kind of stuff. So a lot of it's been .NET on the server, and in doing those sorts of applications, I've had a lot of chance to work with different ways we can model data, different ways we can store data, and stuff like that. For about the last 10 years, I've been dabbling on and off with F Sharp. Uh, uh, but for kind of the last four years or so, it's been my primary language uh, that I go to when I'm building .NET applications, particularly on the server. So that's why I wanted to share a bit about what I like about F Sharp and why I think it's a really interesting tool to have in your toolbox when it comes to working with Cosmos DB. If you want to get in contact with me after the session, you'll find my social media and email and things like that here on screen. Uh, do please reach out if you want to ask any questions that uh, I don't cover off throughout the talk. But that's enough about me. You're here to learn about F Sharp and Cosmos DB. And to get started, I'll just do a quick recap of what F Sharp is for those of you that might not be overly familiar with the language, um, what its use cases are, and why you're here listening to it at a Cosmos conference. So what is F Sharp? Well, F Sharp is an open source language on the .NET runtime. So this was actually one of the first open source languages from Microsoft. It predates uh, C Sharp and the Roslyn compiler. F Sharp's been open source for at least the last 10 years. I don't remember rightly off the top of my head, but at least the entire time that I've worked with it, it's been an open source language managed by the F, F Sharp Foundation uh, and developed in conjunction between Microsoft and open source communities. Um, there's actually a really vibrant open source community that exists around F Sharp that is pushing it into all sorts of weird and wonderful directions building extensions, building libraries, and that sort of stuff. Um, but it is just another language you can run on top of the .NET runtime, uh, just like C Sharp and VB. Uh, but it was also one of the first ways of doing cross-platform .NET development. So when uh, well, in the days before we had uh, .NET Core as a cross-platform option, or, or .NET 5 as cross-platform, uh, we had the Mono framework, which allowed us to do Mac and Linux um, .NET development. And F Sharp had a lot of investment to support that early on. And a lot of that was driven by the community. In fact, I remember being at a conference a couple of years ago and talking to an F Sharp developer that was there and they'd only ever done F Sharp development on Linux. They'd never done it on Windows. They'd never done .NET development on Windows. They were doing F Sharp development. They were doing it entirely on Linux on top of Mono, which I thought was pretty cool at the time uh, because that was like, it was so far removed from what we think of when we think about .NET development. But it's not just running it on .NET runtimes. Uh, the open source community has taken F Sharp into, as I said, a bunch of weird and wonderful areas. And one of those is compiling F Sharp down to JavaScript. So you get all the value of doing a type safe language, but with the ability to run it, well, pretty much everywhere because JavaScript runs on pretty much everything that we can run it on. So this is called the Fable project. So you can find that uh, online and it is a compiler for F Sharp to JavaScript. And then, like I said, you can run it wherever you want to run JavaScript. If you're doing web development, you can get all the values of doing web development in uh, a very React style paradigm uh, and just done with F Sharp doing code share between client and server. So what makes F Sharp different to other languages that we've got on the CLR and the .NET runtimes? Well, F Sharp is a functional first programming language. Where something like C Sharp is object oriented or an OO language, F Sharp is functional first, uh, meaning that it has all the hallmarks of a functional programming language, but it also has support for doing things in a very OO standpoint because it runs on .NET. So because it's functional programming as, like, as a first class citizen, things like functions are able to be used just the same as we'd use any other variables that we have in our application. We can pass them around. Uh, we can do things like partial application, function carrying, where we can give some arguments to a function, uh, but not all of them, and sort of delay execution until we have all of that sort of stuff ready. Um, and, and also right, other really useful aspects of doing uh, functional programming, like immutability by default. So you can very clearly understand how data is being changed inside of an application. And when you're building a data-centered application on, on top of a data store like Cosmos DB, this can be really useful. Knowing how and when data changes because everything was initially immutable makes things really powerful. Now, because F Sharp is a functional programming language at its heart, 
don't mean that doesn't mean you're going to have to learn things like monads and stuff like that. And so I've been doing F sharp for a fair while now, and I still have no idea what a monad is. Uh, I've seen plenty of talks about them, and it just kind of goes over my head, and I don't I don't focus on that kind of stuff. Um, I I just like using it, the language in the way that uh, that I can use it to build the sorts of applications I like to build. Another thing that makes F sharp quite popular is the fact that you can use it very much like a DSL scripting language. So uh, one of the uh, popular projects for this uh, that you'll find from the open source community is called Fake. Uh, so it's an F sharp implement uh, build runner, basically like you know, it's similar to what you might have from a make file because that's probably uh, it's where its name comes from, F sharp make fake. Um, but any sort of automation you might want to be doing, whether it's automating the build process of a .NET application, uh, using it to publish to NuGet, uh, using it to uh, do any other sort of like automation task, where well, you can do that in a type safe, compilable manner using F sharp. Another uh, open source project from the community that treats F sharp like a DSL is the Farmer project, which takes uh, the resource manager uh, JSON language that we've got for doing uh, Azure deployments and gives you an F sharp uh, scripting language to build that against. So instead of having to learn all the JSON idiosms that it is to build a resource manager template, you can do that in a type safe, uh, IntelliSet supported way using Farmer. Again, I think that's kind of new and interesting ways of using a, what is traditionally thought of as a programming language, but to make things a lot easier for uh, the kinds of applications that people are building. When it comes to building applications with F Sharp, uh, we've got uh, uh, Visual Studio obviously has first class support for F Sharp as a programming language. Uh, there's an open source project uh, from the community called Ionide, with, uh, which is what I'll actually be using for the demo shortly. And this is around, uh, uh, this is for VS Code. So if that's your preferred editor of choice, and obviously uh, it's a cross-platform editor, so it's going to be a lot more applicable if you're doing non-Windows based development, um, you can use Ionide as the way to do that. Um, I've also seen that Ionide does have support for uh, other editors like Sublime and Vim, uh, but I have little to no experience in either of those, so I can't comment on those uh, directly. But again, if those are your cup of tea, then uh, there's an extension there to give you uh, some support with doing F Sharp development. So what about F Sharp and Cosmos DB? Like, why are we here talking about that today? Well, the reason that I think F Sharp is a really great language to working with Cosmos DB is because as a functional programming model, it has a lot of power in the way that it expresses data types. Uh, it uses a concept called algebraic data types, which is common in uh, functional programming models. And this is a way of defining data modeling inside of an application. Whether you're using immutable data types like records, um, which are similar to records in C Sharp, um, but they have some more nuances in F Sharp and they've been around in F Sharp for a lot longer. Uh, so they're a little bit more optimized uh, in their support. Uh, that is a way of creating uh, like a domain model very easily with the sorts of applications you might be building. We've also got things like discriminated unions, which are a way of representing uh, different um, data structures as a kind of a representation of a, a parent type uh, and have those available inside of our application. We've even got things called units of measure. Uh, units of measure in F Sharp are a way of annotating numerical values with some additional metadata so that we can understand the context of what that numerical data is meant to be used for. So if we think we're building something that is supporting both imperial and metric, uh, yeah, imperial metric um, uh, measurement lengths, so we've got inches and centimeters, feet and meters, et cetera, et cetera. Well, we wanna make sure that we're not accidentally adding something that came as inches to something that is also centimeters because then we're gonna get mismatch in terms of what we're outputting. Well, we can do that in a compile safe manner using the units of measure in F sharp and combining this with the way we can do data modeling makes it really, really powerful. And also F sharp has a lot of history in being used for data centric applications. And had a lot of um, early history around uh, uh, research and, and data uh, heavy finance applications, which means that it's got a lot of good value propositions when you're working with large scale data sets, you know, which is the kind of thing we might be doing in a Cosmos DB application. So let's just take a look at a, a bit of code um, that is how we would work with a Cosmos DB using the Cosmos DB SDK. Um, obviously this is the .NET SDK and this is C Sharp code. So yes, it's not really applicable to F Sharp, but these are the APIs that we would work with from an F Sharp standpoint. Uh, we create a new query definition. Uh, we can then mutate that by adding parameters to it. 
we can then use the await for each to iterate through the iasync enumerable result that we get back from that query and then write that out. Now, from a C-sharp standpoint, this is very readable, it's very usable, it's, it's very much idiomatic C-sharp in the way that I would approach a C-sharp application. But from an F-sharp standpoint, it's, it's a little bit unfamiliar to an F-sharp developer. Ignoring the fact that from an F-sharp standpoint, we don't need the curly brackets or the semicolons or the squiggly braces or anything like that. But there's things like the way that we uh, create the query definition and then we add parameters to it. Well, we, uh, is that doing a mutation of the query definition or is it going to be creating a new query definition? It's a little bit opaque. And with F-sharp being immutable by default, we want that uh, clear understanding of where something is mutable versus immutable in the way that we're creating our data. Similarly with the await for each, uh, that is a C-sharp approach to doing async operations and particularly an async operation over an async collection, uh, which is what we get back from our query result. And we don't have that same sort of analogy in F-sharp. F-sharp uses a different pipeline for doing async operations to what C-sharp does. It doesn't use the task of T um, APIs that are with inside of .NET. It uses its own async stack um, using what we call a computation expression. And we'll see that a little bit uh, in a moment. And again, we don't kind of loop through something in a similar manner. This is not an, an overly functional programming approach to the way that we would iterate through a series of data that we get back. So while there's, you know, this is a, a perfectly adequate API from a very OO standpoint for working with uh, a data model, it doesn't kind of fit that functional programming model. So let's jump over to a demo and have a look at how we can tackle this from a bit more of an F-sharp idiomatic point of view. Here's an application that I built. It's a quiz application that uh, has a bit of data um, already in a Cosmos DB instance, and we've written this as F Sharp. And we're going to just kind of finish out this application and have a look at how F Sharp can make it so much easier, or at least in my opinion, it can make it easier to work with our, uh, our data store. So I've started modeling some of my data structures here. I've got a question, I've got a user, and then I've got an answer. These are record types in F Sharp, and I've annotated them with this ID and partition key attribute so that we know that those are the ID and the partition key from a Cosmos standpoint. To do this, I'm using a package that I've imported from NuGet called fsharp.cosmosdb, uh, which is a little uh, wrapper around the F Sharp, uh, sorry, the, the Cosmos DB SDK uh, that I've been writing. Um, I'm actually using a pre-release build, at least at the time of recording this session. Hopefully by the time Cosmos Conference comes out, uh, I will have uh, the 0.5 release uh, done and you won't be needing to grab this uh, CI build off my uh, GitHub packages. But you know, we, we work with what we've got in the, <laughs> in, uh, the, the recording standpoint. We're going to create a new uh, record type here, which is going to be a representation of a game so we can play this tri a trivia application. So I'm going to create a new one here. Create type, game, and... We will create that with an ID that we indicate which is the ID field, and that's going to be a string. We're going to create a partition key. And again, just attribute those out with the model type, and that's also a string. And then uh, because I'm familiar with the, the data structures that I've got inside of here, uh, I know that I've got state, which is, the, uh, which is a string which represents the game state. Uh, is the game being waiting for players to join? Is it currently being played? Or uh, has the game completed? Uh, we're going to have to have some questions associated, if I can type correctly, which will use our uh, question record type that we've got above. And that will be an array. We'll have uh, players, and that will be a user array. And lastly, we're going to have some answers so that the player will, they can answer questions and that will be an answer array. So there we go, a, a very simple data object that represents a piece of thing, a piece of data that we stored within inside of our Cosmos instance. Um, I do actually have a few additional fields that are uh, associated with the game inside of the, the documents, um, but this is all that my application here is currently going to need. Um, uh, so, it, it, and it, because it's uh, the record types in F Sharp are so clean and concise, I can quite quickly look at this and go, okay, I see what's been annotated with what, um, what the fields are. I don't have maybe a lot of other stuff that could be seen around it. But you're going to jump forward a little bit in time and have a look at the uh, the next step of our application, which is where we're going to start connecting to Cosmos DB. Down the bottom here on line 61 through line 64. I've created a computational expression, which is where we're going to do our async operation. So this is using the async keyword in F-sharp. 
And then inside of the curly brackets, we're going to be doing things that will be performing async operations. So this will be uh, as similar to like using uh, a function with async as the start in C sharp, um, and then using awaits inside of that. But I am kind of cheating here. I'm just saying async.run synchronously so that we're kind of unwinding that as a, as a synchronous call uh, because this is just a console application at, this, uh, at the moment. But we'll create a function that allows us to connect to our Cosmos DB instance. So we'll create uh, a function. We'll go let uh, create connection. And this is going to take the connection string. And we'll do uh, Cosmos dot from connection string, connection string. And then we'll pipe this using uh, an, a special operator in F sharp, which is called the pipeline operator, which is uh, the pipe character followed by the greater than symbol. I just have font linkages turned on in uh, Visual Studio Code here, and that's why it looks like just an arrow. Pass that to cosmos.database, and we'll give it uh, trivia, which is the name of our database, and we'll pipe that to cosmos.container, uh, container, uh, game. There we go. Now, for those of you that might not be familiar with F-sharp or might not have, have spent much time looking at F-sharp, let's just have a quick look at that code that I've written and understand what it's doing. So we've created a, a let bound variable and in F-sharp, because for functions are first class citizens, whether I'm creating a variable or a function, I always use a let binding for that. So I've created this uh, function, it's called create connection. And the reason it's de determined to be a function is because uh, I have an argument that's available to it, which is this uh, connection string here. Now, F sharp is uh, determined the type of that is going to be string because cosmos.from connection string takes a string as its first argument. This is then going to return me a connection operation, which I then use the pipeline operator or the forward pipe operator to pass through as the final argument to the following method call. This is how we can do uh, piping in F sharp, uh, which is a really uh, popular approach to doing uh, kind of that sort of that chaining that we have in C sharp where we might just do um, create the constructor of the query definition and then do dot with parameter. Um, we would use a pipeline in F sharp to do that sort of approach. So we pipe that in, as I said, it always comes in as the last argument. And my scroll bar has stopped working there. Uh, it comes here and we pass that as the database and then that's going to return me a connection operation. And then that's going to be passed here. Now, because we see that it's returning, we can tell that we're always getting either a new one or maybe it's mutating that one. It doesn't really matter, but we're always getting back the a connection operation, which is the result of those changes. Now, if we were to do this without the pipeline operator, and we can do this without pipelining, it would be the same as doing cosmos.container game. And then we do cosmos.database trivia. And then finally, cosmos.from connection string constra, because that was an easy way to type. And we'll just do let underscore just to ignore that. So this is the same as we've got um, unwound a bit further down, uh, but the pipeline operator obviously makes that a little bit clear and concise. So let's grab our connection before we travel on to the next step in our uh, application. So the connection will be, uh, we'll use the config. Uh, so this is just using the um, ASP.NET, oh, so the .NET um, configuration manager uh, stuff that we we've imported, and I've got the app settings file, and I've got my connection string and things like that in there. Uh, Cosmos connection and connection string, and then we can pipe that into uh, create connection, and then we'll just make this uh, return nothing. So. Um, in F sharp, we do implicit return, so we don't have to use the return keyword unless we're in a computational expression. And then we have to say, this is where that expression ends, and this is what the return value outwards. Uh, by just returning the parameters like that, uh, this is what we uh, return as a, a unit, which is equivalent-ish to a, like a C sharp void. So this is just an asynchronous operation that doesn't return any output for anyone to consume. All right, let's jump through to step three and I realized that I, in my uh, pre-written notes, I called it get connection instead of uh, create connection. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see uh, how much I'm remembering from uh, my memory on how I wrote this. But we've, now that we've established our connection, let's get the questions out so that we can start. Well, we'll just dump those out on screen so we can see what those questions look like. So we're going to create a new function and we'll call this uh, get questions. And this will take the connection as the argument. And we will to get my equals there, uh, we will do a uh, connection and we'll pipe that into cosmos.query 
query, if I can spell, select top 10 star from C where C dot uh, model type is question. So uh, model type is, uh, as we saw uh, a little bit further up, that's my uh, partition key. And that's just used to determine whether it's a question versus a game versus a user versus an answer, so on and so forth. Um, so that is how we can then, uh, again, using our, our pipeline in there, uh, we are creating our query, which is then going to return out a container operation. And then I can come down and I can use this. So we need to uh, dump this out and we need to tell that this is going to be an asynchronous operation. So I'm using the do bang statement, which uh, is indicating that we're doing an asynchronous operation that's not going to return any output. So it's essentially going to return a void because uh, we'll just em emulate that sort of for each loop that we had in the C sharp example we saw in slides. So this will go uh, connection piped into get query, uh, sorry, get questions. We'll uh, pipe that into cosmos.execute async, and that will return the, uh, we will then strongly type that as a question. We'll then pass that through async seek. So this is how we can unwind a, uh, an a, uh, the equivalent of um, I, enumeral, uh, I async enumeral in F sharp. And then we'll do iter. So iter is uh, iterate through each item and do an action that's going to return no value, return a unit. So equivalent to doing a for each loop. And then we'll do fun Q and then we'll just say print, print FN question. And we'll just dump out the question name for the moment. Q dot question. Okay. So we can save that and let's run our application. And this should dump out the first 10 questions that we can pull from our Cosmos DB backend. Now a moment while it starts up, makes my connection and, and oh, We've got an exception. It's nothing like exceptions when you're doing live coding demos or recorded live coding demos. Anyway, um, okay, so owner resource does not exist. Okay, so that's likely that I've got something wrong in the way that I've established my connection. My connection string must be valid because, well, I've connected to it, but I've probably got my database or my container incorrect. Oh, that's a little bit annoying. So the next thing that I'd likely do here is jump into the portal and have a look in there and be, okay, well, what did what did I actually name it? But instead, we're going to jump forward in time again to step five, uh, just because I'm whoops, running a little bit behind schedule. So we'll jump forward to step five. And now I've gone and added another section to my uh, dependencies list. Uh, so I'm using Packet, which is uh, a, a popular uh, NuGet alternative for F Sharp. Uh, it doesn't need to be just used for F Sharp, but it's very popular in the F Sharp community uh, where I can define out uh, pa uh, dependencies and then uh, uh, refer to them uh, throughout my uh, projects. So I've created a new group in here called Analyzers, and I'm actually just going to do a .NET Packet install uh, just while I'm talking and then .NET uh, Restore. So what this is doing is in installing a F Sharp Cosmos DB analyzer. So in F Sharp, we have, uh, all, this is actually something that came out of the Ionide project. Um, an analyzer is the way that we can uh, add something to inspect the code that we've written and give us some insights. Similar to the, I guess, the C Sharp um, analyzers that we can have uh, that can help us uh, with the, the way that we're doing uh, like our C Sharp programming. But in F Sharp, um, we have that same sort of concept. I'm just going to reload the editor because now that I've installed that um, uh, the, the analyzer, I need to restart Ionide uh, so that it, it can pick it up. And then there we go. So that's all up and running. We come back into program over here. Just clap the side sidebar off. Okay, everything is up and running. And if uh, if we see now, we've got our uh, text editor here has got a yellow indication on here, uh, which might not be able to see on video, but it's saying that there are two problems in this file. So I can pop up the pro problems uh, down here in uh, in VS Code, and you'll see that it's got a couple of uh, messages for me. Let's jump up here, and we'll see that trivia is highlighted. If I hover over that, it tells me that the database trivia was not found. What the analyzer has done is it's looked into my Cosmos database because it's got access to my connection string and said, well, hang on a sec. Do you want to replace that with trivia? And if we go into our Cosmos DB database explorer, which now has to reconnect uh, because I reloaded the editor, give that a moment, we'll see that the name of the database 
in my Cosmos instance is actually called Trivia, not Trivia with, oh, trivia with a lowercase t, not a capital T. It's this one down here. There we go. It's going to load. There we go. And if we click on Game, we'll see that it replaced with Game. And then if we have a look again, expand that out, our container was named Game. I think that's pretty cool. Like F Sharp is basically looking at this, these magic strings that are existing in my application going, hang on a sec, what you've got there, maybe it's not correct. Here's a quick fix that can fix that up for you. Um, I do have a small order of execution problem where it's uh, an, it's not actually detected that uh, the file has been saved. So there we go. I just need to, to force a save on the file for the analyzer to rerun. Now that's all uh, fixed. If we hit F5, we should be able to run our application because, well, we've now corrected the names of our database and our container. Give that a moment. We'll see in our output here. There we go. We didn't get any errors. And if I just expand that up, we'll see that we have a bunch of questions that have been returned. I think that's pretty nifty that uh, F Sharp was able to give us that sort of insight into our application before we'd even you know, tried to run something. Like if I had have had the analyzer pre-installed, I wouldn't have hit that first exception. Uh, this kind of support that you can get along the way, I think that's that's the value that we can get here. Let's just jump out to uh, the last step in our application, which is our fully completed game. We'll come down to how the game looks and reads if we look at the asynchronous block in our code, we're calling, uh, we're getting back the game, doing, this time we're using let bang instead of do bang because we want to get a result from that asynchronous operation. So we're getting our questions, we're executing that asynchronously, and then we're using a, the async seek fold method. Fold is similar to aggregate from a C sharp link standpoint. Uh, we're calling a method play question, and then we're having some initial game state. So every time you play a question, it's going to create new game state. We jump up to play question. We receive a question and the current game state. We're then going to prompt you for a question. We're going to then uh, use some highly advanced randomization to make sure that you can never detect which is the correct or incorrect answer. <laughs> uh, nothing like string can cats, uh, sorry, array can cats and then, or pens and then sorts. Uh, prompt you out for the result and then uh, ask you for that input. If my editor stops jumping around through read line, parse that as an int, complete the question which will then return brand new game state by taking the existing state and then using uh, the with keyword. So this is how we, ah, my editor is jumping all around today, using the, um, uh, this is how we modify a record or we create a new record using the existing record, but um, uh, changing a few of the values in it. So we're adding um, the current question to the existing list of questions and the current answer to the existing list of answers. Finally, this will return us out the completed game, which we can then do Cosmos insert, execute async, and then we'll just iterate over and say the game has been created. Uh, and we can see that this time I don't need to provide the gener generic argument because game is determining that for us. Um, for, uh, for brevity's sake, I, I won't run this, but uh, the code for this is up on my GitHub. And you can grab access to it and you can have a run through the game and see how it um, outputs to. But there's one other thing I wanted to show off from an analyzer standpoint before we wrap up today. This is uh, something that I'm working on for the analyzer uh, and it's not quite there yet. So uh, I couldn't show it in the uh, other demo, but I can show it off here. So what I've got here is a slightly more advanced query where I've got a couple of arguments that are being passed in, uh, sorry, a couple of parameters for this query. So the Cosmos query is um, it's uh, grabbing people out by their name or uh, and where the name and age match. Now we'll see that I've got a couple of yellow squigglies, but I've also got a red squiggly. And this is something that I constantly do when I'm uh, when I'm writing uh, 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 Cosmos queries. Is I always forget to put the ampersand in front. Sorry, the the at symbol in front of a parameter. So I wrote an analyzer to help me with that. So you can see that the parameter age is missing the at symbol. If I hit uh, Control dot, replace with at, and then that will save. And now it's saying, well, hang on a sec. Age has been defined, but it's not being used in the query. And I can jump up to here and we can see the parameter age is defined, but it's not provided to the query. So maybe up here, we'll click control dot and we'll replace that with age. And we could do the same for last name and replace that all the way through. But again, for brevity's sake, we'll skip over that. This is where I think uh, like the real power can start coming in is that we can get this sort of support through um, the, the ecosystem that exists around F sharp to make it so much easier to write Something that is, well, it's essentially going to be a runtime error. Like I wouldn't maybe have caught that until I'd actually executed my query at runtime. But we're just about out of time here. 
So I'll just do a quick recap of some of the stuff that we talked about today. Uh, I think that F-sharp is very much worth having a look at if you're doing data-centered applications with Cosmos DB for reasons like you know, algebraic data types. The way that we can do our domain modeling in F-sharp is so much more powerful, at least from my experience, than I can do in the similar things with, uh, with other CLL languages. Uh, like those record types can be so clean and concise that it makes it really easy to understand what our application looks like and what the data models are, that exist are. I didn't show off things like discriminated unions or uh, units of measure or anything like that. But again, those are things that you can leverage with inside of um, your data modeling to make it even easier to understand the different con uh, concepts with inside of your uh, application. So instead of everything just being called string, you can have specific types of strings that represent uh, uh, whether it is a uh, what your partition key is, for example. Uh, we can leverage F -sharp to make what I feel is a very expressive DSL. Now, from a C sharp standpoint, we can use those chain, method chaining op, uh, options to to create our queries, add in parameters, so on and so forth. But we can do a similar thing with F sharp and making that DSL experience, where we can do Cosmos dot establish a connection, like, like connect from a connection string. Uh, we can then access the database, get the container back, and then we have that container connection. Now, this is the same as if we were to do, create a Cosmos client, do dot get database dot get container. It's the same thing, but from an F-sharp standpoint, uh, I, I find the readability a lot more clean and concise than I do the equivalent C-sharp. But again, that might be my personal preference uh, bleeding through a little bit. And lastly, uh, we can leverage something like an analyzer to give us some help around the way that our application is written. So we can find out things, well, maybe we've got you know, a magic string that exists uh, that is a query that has parameters available to it. And we might have some mismatches in the way that we've written that. And it wasn't clear when we originally wrote it, but uh, it is more clearer once we are able to, um, uh, uh, we could potentially end up with a runtime error. So we can have an analyzer that can help us avoid runtime errors as much as we can. Uh, if you want to grab, a, uh, have a look at the F Sharp Cosmos DB um, wrapper library I've got for the SDK, you'll find it there. There's a QR code that you can scan, uh, save you typing down the link uh, while watching the video. And lastly, if you want to grab the code for the demo that um, I showed off today, uh, you can grab that again on my GitHub. But that's all I've got time for today. Thank you for letting me share some of why I think F Sharp is a really valuable tool to have in your toolbox, especially when you're working with data centered applications. Uh, again, my name is Aaron Powell. You can find me online at all the various links there. Uh, and hopefully you enjoy the rest of Cosmos DB Conference. Bye for now.